Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 79. Day, day 3079, 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 79, we are on page 288, we are on page 288, and the topic that we'll cover today is bar graph. Let's, let's get going then. Bar graphs is a very simple, very straightforward concept, obviously you are aware of it. There are a couple of things that we have to keep in mind when we are drawing bar graphs, when we are showing the different bar, one thing that we must always keep in mind is that the width, width of each bar has to be the same, has to be uniform. Now when I'm going to do it on the blackboard, I'll do my very best to make sure that the width are the same, but because it's freehand, uh, you'll forgive me. But if you look at the graphs in the, in the book, uh, we can, the one we are about to do is, uh, the problem that we are about to do is 4.1.7, 4.1.7, which is on page 288, page number 288, I was going to grab a clip before when I went there uh, and I forgot and I, the page, anyway, I, I'm a bit distracted because of this because the page keeps flying, page 288, that's the one we're going to do, 4.1.7, as, as you can see in that Figure number one on page 288, the very first figure, the top one, the width of each bar is the same. It has to be the same. The second thing we have to understand is that, which is very straightforward, obvious, the bloody obvious thing, which is the whole point, which is that the height of the each bar represents the quantity or, or frequency, how many times something happens. The bars themselves can be represented either vertically or horizontally. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. But most, in most cases, we will see them vertically. Let's keep going. Shall we? Enough of the talk. Here's the example. We are given enrollment at five colleges in 2009. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the raw data. So think carefully. We're going to use the raw data. We're going to make the bar graph. We're going to come up with the bar graph, and then we're going to erase. We're going to erase this raw data because in the exam we are not going to have this information. We're just going to have the graph in front of us. A bar graph is going to be presented to us, and they will ask us a couple of questions based on that bar graph. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Once we finish plotting the bar graphs, we're going to answer a couple of questions. Let's get going. So we are told that the enrollment at five colleges in 2009 was as follows. So let's, let's, let's see what we can do. It goes all the way from 4,000 to 7,500. So let's, let's see what we can do. Let's pretend this is eight. So halfway is going to be four. Half of that is going to be two. This is going to be six. That's enough. 4,000. A is 4,000. That's very straightforward. A was 4,000. That's college A. College B is 4,500. This is 4,000, this is 6,000, this is 5,000, and we need 4,500 right here somewhere. That's our college B. Well, so far so good. As you can already see, the bits are not exactly the same, but that's okay. This is almost 5,000, so this is 4,000, that's 5,000, it's going to be slightly under 5,000, so just a slightly under 5,000. Let's see. College D is 6,500. This is 6,000, this is 8,000, this is 7,000, 6,500 right here. And you can see, if you see the graph in the book actually, the reading is much, uh, it's much easier to read it as opposed to my work here. Finally, we have 7,500. This is 6,000, this is 8,000, this is 7,000, 7,500, somewhere here. And that's it, we're done. That information does not exist now. It never appeared, we never saw it. It didn't, they would not give it to us. This is all we will have. Do you understand? Now let's answer the question. A bar graph will appear on the exam and they will ask us 
perhaps two, perhaps three uh, questions based on it. And we simply have to read the bar graph and answer the questions. Here's the first one. It says, it says, enrollment in college B was approximately, approximately, what percent of A? Enrollment of col in college B was approximately what percentage of B? What enrollment in college B, B is right here, this is 4,000, that was 4,500, so that was B. That was B, and A is 4,000 right here, so we're looking for this ratio here, this ratio in terms of percentage, in terms of percentage. What can we do? Percentage, as we know, means out of 100, which means we need to make the bottom into a 100. How do we convert the 4 into 100? It's very simple. Multiply the bottom by 25. 4 times 25, now is now 100. If we're going to multiply the bottom by 25, of course, we must multiply the top by 25. Let's figure out what 4.5 times 25 is, shall we? 4.5 times 25. 25 times 4.5. Let's see what happens. Well, 4 times 25 is very easy. 4 times, 20, 4 times 25 is 100. That's very easy. And what about 25 times half? 25 times half is simply 25 halves. And 25 half is made up of 24 halves and another half. And 24 half is 12. So it's 112 and a half. This equals to 112 and a half percent. Enrollment college B was 112% of what it was in College A. Enrollment in College B, question was, is what percentage of the enrollment in College A? The answer is, it is 112.5%, 112.5%. In other words, there are more students in College B, which we could clearly see, obviously. Another way to interpret the whole thing is that we multiply that by 2. If we multiply that by 2, we get 225, don't we? So we, we can say here that for every, for every 200 students, in A, there were 225 students in B, in, in B. For every 200 students in college A, there were 225 students in B. And that's it. Why do they use the word approximate when we can come up with the exact fraction here, exact percentage? We were able to come, we managed to come up with, come up with the exact percentage. Why did they use the word fraction, approximate? Because in the multiple choice exam, the answer choice is not going to be 112%, 112%, 12.5%, one of the answer choices will simply say 112, and that's your answer. 112, 115, 127, whatever the, whatever the common mistakes might be once you analyze the problem, that's the whole thing. Making up the question on the exam is very simple. It's coming up with the four clever wrong answers is very difficult because the four clever wrong answers are the four most popular mistakes. And that's where the genius kicks in, the people who make the exam. They can figure out what are going to be the four most popular wrong answers? And that's how they come up with the five answer choices. And one of those five answer choices is going to say 112. And that's the correct answer. Let's answer the next question, shall we? Question number two. Question number two. Question number two says, What is the, what is the, Approximate, again they use the word approximate, I don't know why. Approximate ratio of students in E to C. E to C. Let's see what we can do. E to C. Oh, forget the word approximate here. What is the, what is the ratio? What is the ratio? of students in E to C. E to C. Let's see how many do we have in E. So this is where we have to go and read the bar graph because the data doesn't exist. That was never given to us. In E we see seven and a half. I know my graph is lousy but the graph that they give you we will be able to read properly what the, what the figures are. Do you understand? And that's probably why they use the word approximately because it's very really difficult to see whether it's 7,500 or 7,400 or 7,499. That's probably the reason why they keep using the word approximately because otherwise it's impossible to give you the exact answer because there are it just says 8000 next to it 
and just just says 6,000 next to it. How am I supposed to figure out what that figure is precisely? If it's 7,500 or is it 7,501? Let's put it back, approximately. So it's 7,500, 7 and a half, and C, we can clearly see is, perhaps we cannot clearly see. Oh, it was almost 5,000, wasn't it? It was 4,900, 4, wasn't it? 4,900, almost 5, almost 5. Oh, that's one of the reasons why they're going to say approximately, because we are using 5 here. Now that's the reason. There we go, you see? So had, even if they had given the precise reading on the graph, they still would have used the word approximately, because what we're doing here is we're using 5. Let's multiply it up and divide by 2, so we can get rid of this half. You do that, 7.5 times 2 is going to give us 15, and 5 times 2 is going to give us 10. Once we have 15 over 10, we can divide top and bottom by 5, and we can see the ratio is 3 to 2. The required ratio is 3 to 2. Required ratio is 3 to 2. Let's do the next problem, shall we? Next problem, 4.1.8. Here, in this bar graph, in this bar graph, we are showing only one variable. The one variable being the enrollment in colleges in year 2009. But it is possible to show more than one variable in the given bar graph. We can show two variables, we can show three variables, we can show 20 variables. If you have more than one variable, we just put them next to each other. So here, in the next, next example, 4.1.8, we're going to have enrollment not just in one year, but we're going to show them, we're going to show the enrollment in two years together. So here we have enrollment. In three colleges, in three colleges for 2009, for 2009 and 2010. And 2010. And the colleges are A, B, C. The book itself does not give the data. I'm giving you the data as best as we can there from the graph there and, and so this is where the story begins from the raw data so we have, these are all presented in thousands enrollment is given in thousands we have four four and a half and five we have three and three quarter three and three quarter and four and nine ten same as before it's the same same enrollment for 2010 is the same isn't it what we had last graph last last one that we just did Oh, it's for 2009. But oh, never mind. They're, 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 not, they're not related. They're not related at all. For one thing, we had five colleges here. We had two. Just ignore everything I said. Let's plot it, shall we? So now we have two variables. Okay? Enrollment in 2009 and 2010. We're going to put them next to each other. Again, we have to keep in mind that the, the width of the bar has to be the same. Let's put it here. And it goes up to, up to five. It goes up to five. So let's see what we can do. One, two, three, four, and five. That should do the job. That should do the job. So y axis represents the enrollment in thousands. College A had 4,000 students in 2009. One, two, three, four, 4,000 students in 2009. What happened in 2010? It dropped to three and three, three and three quarters. So this is three and a half, three and three quarters is right here. That's our college. College A. Let's move on to college B. It had four and a half. So this is four, this is five, this is four and a half. And it, it also dropped to three and three quarters the following year. So it's going to be same 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 height as this one. And again, this is 
Khalid B. Let's move on. Khalid C had five. And it drops to it drops to four and nine tenth, which is pretty close to five. There we go. This is what is given to us. Now based on that, they will ask you a couple of questions. So let's answer the questions, shall we? Now pretend that this data does not exist because it never did exist. This is what is what is given to us. Row data we use so that we can come up with the graph on the, on the on the blackboard. Do you understand? So here's the first question. Which college it says? Which college had the greatest percentage? Greatest percentage drop. In enrollment from 2009 to 2010. From 2009 and 2010. And there are only three colleges. It's either A or B or C. And we can clearly rule out C because C just goes from 5,000 to 4,900. There's hardly any drop at all. The percentage drop in the enrollment in college C is going to be almost zero. It's the same amount, same number of students, 5,000 and 4,900. That's not going to be the one. We're not going to waste our time with that. It's either A or B. In A, it goes from 4,000 to 4, it goes from 4,000 to 4,000, 4 and 3 quarter thousand, 4 and 3 quarter thousand, 300, 750 people, a drop of 250 students. So we have a drop of a quarter of a thousand. We're doing in we are doing it in terms of 1,000, we have a drop of a quarter of a 1,000 from the starting point of 4. And here, in this one, it goes from 4.5 to the same amount, 3 and 3 quarter. 4.5 to 3 and 3 quarter, 4.5 to 4 would have been half, and then another quarter is 3 quarters. Let's stay with this story, okay? 3 quarters, a drop of 3 quarters, 1,000, out of 4.5. Let's erase the C, we do not need the C anymore. Which one do you suppose is going to be greater? We don't have to waste our time to answer this question. We can clearly see that even though even though the denominators are different, four and four and a half, but that's almost the same. Four and four and a half is not that much difference. What we have to understand is that the numerator in B is three times the numerator in A. So despite the fact that it has a bigger denominator, slightly bigger denominator, it's not going to compensate for the fact that its numerator is three times that guy. The answer is B. The answer is going to be B. Do you understand? We don't have to figure it out precisely what these are in percentages. As far as the exam is concerned, if we were taking the exam right now, we are done. The answer has to be B. But we are not taking the exam right now for learning purposes and only for the learning purposes. This is not something we will do in the real exam. For learning purposes, we are going to convert both of these in percentages to, con to, to see for ourselves that indeed this figure is going to be approximately three times that figure. Because you see the numerator is three times one quarter versus three quarters. To figure out this in percentage is very simple. Multiply the top and bottom by 25. 4 times 25 is 100. And a quarter of 25, 24, a quarter of 25, a quarter of 25 is very simple, which is simply 24 quarters and one quarter. 25 quarter is made up of 24 quarters and one quarter. 24 quarters is six. So it's six and a quarter. So six and a quarter percent. Six and a quarter percent because it's out of 100 now. And as we said, this amount is going to be about three times as much, little less than three times as much. So this is six. This is going to be about 17 or so. Let's find out, shall we? So now we're going to work on this one, okay? Watch what happens. First of all, we have three quarters over four and a half. Let's put down four and a half as nine halves. Nine halves is four and a half, which is equal to three quarters times two ninth. So far, so good. Let's reduce it. Two goes into four two times. Three goes into nine three times. So we end up with one sixth. We end up with one sixth. I said one sixth, but I wrote down one third. One sixth. What do you suppose that is in percentage 
one sixth. Do you know? Do you know what one sixth is approximately in terms of percentage? Well, we know, we know that one third, we know that one third is approximately thirty-three percent. One third is approximately thirty-three percent, or one third is precisely thirty-three and one third percent, or approximately thirty-three point three three percent, or just thirty-three percent. If one third is thirty-three percent, one sixth, which is a half of that amount, one half of half of one third. If you were to multiply this by half, we'll end up with one sixth. Therefore, if one third is thirty-three percent, one sixth must be half of thirty-three. Because if you multiply this side by half, you have to multiply that side by half. What is half of thirty-three? Well, half of thirty-two is sixteen, isn't it? Half of thirty-two. Is 16. Therefore, half of 33 must be 16 and a half. So this figure is approximately 16 and a half percent. Voila. But as you can clearly see, when the difference is that stark, when the difference is that stark, and if we still waste our time trying to figure out which one is bigger, if we still waste our time trying to see which one is bigger, then we have no one to blame but our own stupidity. We didn't have to do that. We have to see clearly here. That this numerator is three times this numerator, and the denominator is all exactly this, not exactly, almost the same. And therefore, this answer is going to be about three times that answer. And when the difference is that huge, we don't actually have to do it out to, to see which one is bigger. The answer is B. Which college had the greatest drop in percentage? College B had the greatest drop in terms of percentage in enrollment from 2009 to 2010. It had a drop of 16 and a half percent approximately. It had a drop of well over 16%, if you like. Let's answer the next question, second question. They're asking two questions. They're asking two questions, we need the room. Second question says the total enrollment in the three colleges. So red pen, I don't want a red pen. The total enrollment, this is part B. Total enrollment in three colleges. In 2009, in 2009, was what percentage of enrollment in 2010? And if you like to do it yourself, not if you like, you should try to do it yourself. Pause the video and try to do it yourself. Pause the video. Do it yourself and then resume it and then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do, as I always tell you. So I'll give you five seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video because I'm a nice guy. Sounds much better than to say that I'm a lazy guy and I, I need a break. You understand? Sounds much better says, to say I'm a nice guy. So let's find out the total enrollment first. Total enrollment first, okay? 2009 first, we see here for for A, B, and C for 2009, A, B, C is 4, then in 2010, in 2010 it became 3 and 3 quarter, B, B, C is 5 and a half, don't get confused, this is 2009, this, this is, these are years, these are years, and it became 3 and 3 quarter also, and this one stayed the same, 5 and 4, 9, 10. Let's add them up, shall we? Oh, this is... Something has drastically gone wrong. Five and a half, I don't see any five and a half. It only went up to five. This should have been four and a half. There you go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this is five, this is four and a half. This should have been four and a half. Four plus four is eight. Eight plus five is thirteen. So it's thirteen and a half. And this one, okay, pay attention. 
three quarters and three quarters is one and a half, one and a half, and this we're going to count as a whole, that's two and a half. So that's half, carry two. One more time, three quarters and three quarters is one and a half, one and a half, and one is two and a half. Half, carry two. Three plus three is six, six plus two is eight, eight plus four is twelve. One, twelve and a half. It used to be 13,000, 13 and a half thousand, and it dropped by almost a thousand students in the next year. Now we need to find that as a percentage. Let's do it here. So we have 13 and a half, they're asking us what is it as a percentage of 12 and a half. What can we do? We need to make the bottom into 100. Had it been 25, had it been 25, 25 times 4, we know 25, 25 times 4 is 100. But it's not 25, it's 12 and a half. Well, 12 and a half is half of 25. So if 25 times 4 is 100, then 12 and a half times 8, 12 and a half times 8 must be 100 as well. 12 and a half times 8 must be 100 as well. And if you don't believe me, we can actually do it out very quickly here. 12 and a half times 8. 12 and a half times 8. Shall we? Let's do it very quickly. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 2 is 16. And 8 halves are 4. You see? 80 plus 16 plus 4, 16 plus 4 is 20 and 80. One more time. One more time. We're trying to figure out 8 times 12 and a half. One more time. Here we go. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 12 is 16. And 8 halves are 4. Of course this has to be 100. If 25 times 4 is 100, then half of 25, which is 12 and a half, times 8 must also be 100. So if we multiply the bottom by 100, we must multiply the top by 100. And now we have to figure out what 13 and a half times 8 is, which is, we're going to do the exact same way, because instead of 12, we're going to have 13. Instead of 12, we're going to have 13. Nothing is going to change. Everything else is going to stay the same. So here we go. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 3 now is 24. 8 times 3 is going to be 24, and 8 halves are 4, same as before. 24 and 4 is 28. 28 and 80 is going to be 108. One. And the enrollment, the enrollment in the first year happened to be 108 percent of the enrollment that we have today, of what we have today. For every 100 students that we have this year, the previous year, we had 108 students. We lost 8 of them for every 100. That is not a good news. That is not a good news. What a sad, sad segment that we leave our story at. And I say segment because that is our next topic. The next topic that you see there is on page number 289 where we're going to discuss, where we're going to discuss segmented bar graph. What are segmented bar graph? Well, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay? But at that sad note, We'll end our story. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.